for this journey. Help us not to get weary in well-doing. Forgive us of our sins and trespasses that we might go forth in sanctification and holiness and winning a lost world to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Happy Palm Sunday. And uh, thank God for everybody that's here today. Uh, today's one of those days where I looked at about 10 different scriptures and I prayed and I said, God, okay, where you want me to go? And, uh, you know, God is like this. You know, we, we want God to come two or three days early, but sometimes he comes right at the last minute. But he comes when you need him. So, with that being said, turn with me to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, starting in verse 31. Matthew chapter 26, starting in verse 31. And if I had to put a title on this message today, it would be, It's Not About You, It's About Jesus. That's one of my favorite gospel songs. Y'all remember that song? Yeah. Yeah, I, I love that song. But it, that song was in my spirit this morning, so I said, okay, Lord, I got you. Matthew chapter 26, starting in verse 31. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered and said to him, Even if all are made to stumble because of you, I will never be made to stumble. Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, that this night, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus came with, a, came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, Sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful, and deeply distressed and he said to them my soul is exceeding sorrowful even to death stay here and watch with me and I'll stop right there uh, this was a very distressing time for the disciples um, it was right during the Passover celebration it was right when they had the Last Supper and Jesus all of a sudden at, after the Last Supper got very somber and very deep with them. It's like going to a party and all of a sudden somebody says, I got something serious to tell you. And so Jesus told them in verse 31 that this night all of you are going to stumble. This night all of you are going to leave me. All of you are going to abandon me. Now, you think about this. They've been with Jesus three years. Through the good times, through the bad, they've seen Jesus raise the dead. They've seen Jesus walk on water. They've seen Jesus tell storms to stop. They've seen Jesus uh, touch the woman or um, heal the woman with the issue of blood. They've seen Jesus cast out devils. They've seen Jesus do all types of things. But they couldn't handle what Jesus just told them. And it's kind of funny because we're like the disciples in a lot of ways. You remember when they were in the storm and they said, Master, cares thou not that we perish? If they only listened to Jesus before they got on the boat and he said, let us go to the other side, they wouldn't have stressed like that. And we're the same way. Sometimes we hear the word, we listen to the word, but we ain't really receiving the word. Now, Jesus, you got to think about this. Jesus, the same Jesus that did all those miracles I said and predicted and, 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 and foresaw all this stuff, told them, y'all going to leave me. What did Peter do? Let's look at Peter. Peter answered in verse 33 and said to him, Even if all are made to stumble because of you, I will never be made to stumble. Now, what he did was throw his other disciples under the bus. That's what Peter did. He threw Peter, James, John, Matthew, all, he threw everybody under the bus. Them rascals may leave you, not me, Lord. And the reason why Peter said that, Peter said that was because 
It stopped being about Jesus and it became about him. And that's one of the biggest problems in our church setting sometimes. Everything we do in the house of God and for God is about him. It ain't about whether you get attention or not. It ain't about whether somebody recognizes you. It ain't about, it's about Jesus. And Peter, he, Peter doesn't realize, Peter was really walking in selfishness. Because by him throwing his other, other it, it kind of shows you what Peter thought about the other disciples. Basically what Peter was saying was, I'm better than Lord. I'm deeper than them, Lord. I'm more spiritual than them, Lord. I'm more faithful than them, Lord. Yeah. That's what he was doing. He was throwing his buddies under the bus. I want you to think about this. Because we're all guilty of it. You know, what, what we do for the Lord is for the Lord. You know, whether you get credit or not, whether you get recognized or not, whether anybody sees you or not, it's all to God's glory. And, you know, it's funny because I remember when I was growing up, that's one of the things I always loved about my mother. My mother would do good deeds, and a lot of people, people sometimes people wouldn't know it. She would just do it. And whenever you do something for God or do something that's right, anytime you want attention or praise or notoriety for it, your heart was in the wrong place. You, you weren't doing it for the right reasons. And it's sort of like the, the rich young ruler that said to Jesus, um, you know, can I follow you? You know, I, I've obeyed all the commandments since my youth. He started bragging to Jesus about how spiritual he was. Now, can you imagine somebody bragging to Jesus about how spiritual they are? That's like, that's like me going up to Michael Jordan and bragging about my, my game. Yo, Mike, I know you Michael Jordan, but you know, Mike, I got, I got moves. Mike, you, 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 you ain't seen me, Mike. Watch this crossover, you know. And I can see Michael Jordan going, okay, really? You know. So think about when Jesus is talking to this rich young ruler, and this rich young ruler trying to impress Jesus with his spirituality. And Jesus said, would you lack one thing? He said, sell your goods and give that money to the poor. The Bible says he went away sad. And Jesus realized that he loved that money more than he loved him. Yes. And see, Jesus can see what we can't see. Yes. We think we know ourselves. You know, people say, oh, the Lord know me better than I know myself. You don't know yourself. We don't know ourselves. Because a lot of times what God will do, God will let embarrassing things happen to us just so we know our real selves. Yeah. We don't know. You know, a lot of times we like to think we're more spiritual than we are. We like to think we're deeper than we are. But a lot of times God's got to burst our bubble just so we get a reality check. You know, it's like the time I thought I was good as my karate instructor and he whipped my behind. You know, I thought I was, I, I thought I was bad because I, I didn't lose no karate tournaments. I was the star pupil and he beat me like a can of paint. I mean, I was all over the floor stumbling. He was kicking me upside my head. But he did that for a reason, to show me, you ain't all that yet. And sometimes God has to do that with us to let us know, you ain't all that. Now, it might seem embarrassing, but God has to do that. Because if you, if you enter into spiritual warfare thinking you all that, the devil going to wear you out. And the thing about it, what Jesus was trying to teach these guys was, you can't do my will and do my work without the power of the Holy Spirit. Because he told them when they were in the Garden of Gethsemane and they fell asleep while he was going through the most devastating part of his life. He was going through the most traumatic part of his life. And they went to sleep on him. And, and when he woke up, when, when, he, when he went to them and they were asleep, he woke them up. And he said, couldn't you not watch me for one hour? Just one hour. I just want y'all to pray for an hour. But then he said something. He said, but the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. They still didn't get it. You know why? Because they went back to sleep. And they left Jesus praying alone by himself. Till blood drops came out of his forehead from being in agony so much. But it says that God sent an angel to minister to Jesus. So when you're going through your toughest times and your family don't seem like they care, your spouse, the, the neighbors, the church, don't worry, God got your back. If he got to send an angel through the clouds to come minister to you, he will. But you have to understand something about the Lord. You can't serve God in your flesh. You can't serve God in your emotions. You can't serve God with your ego. 
Only through the power of the Holy Spirit can you serve God. That's why a lot of times God will put us in compromising situations that seem like it's hopeless. Because he's trying to prove to us and show us it ain't about you. You can't do this on your own. It's going to take my help to get this done. I, I guess it's about, I guess I don't know how long ago it was. I had a flat tire. I was on my way home. And normally I always, 99% of the time I got AAA, but this is one of those times I didn't have AAA. And I was having my leg was, you know, acting up. It was like it is now. But at that time it was probably feeling worse. So I was going to try and change the tire on my own. I couldn't even really get on my knees to get, I couldn't do it. So I sat there upset and I'm just saying, okay, Lord, I need some help. And so I'm, I look up and this Puerto Rican man is standing in front of the 7-Eleven and he walks over to me and he says, he says, oh, you want me to help you change your tire? Yeah, I'll change it for you. And I said, okay. And he changed the tire quick, fast, in a hurry. And I tried to go in my pocket and give him some money. He said, no, 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 no problem. So I shook his hand. I said, what's your name? He said, Angel. I kid you not. He said his name was Angel. <laughs> that was at the 7-Eleven in Browns Mills. <laughs> yeah. So don't play with God. You know, when you get in a situation where you feel like you can't do it, sometimes God puts you in that situation so you will realize it ain't about you. You know, as Americans especially, we've been taught to be self-sufficient. Yeah. To be strong, tough it out. You know, you listen to some of the politicians as they cut benefits and take things away from us. They tell you, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You know, <laughs> that's the American mantra. Be tough. But you know what? When you serve God, you ain't got to be tough. You got to have faith. Because sometimes being tough will just get you killed. Sometimes being tough will get you hurt. Sometimes we got to learn how when you're on your knees, that's the most powerful position you can be in. When you can say, Lord, help me. Amen. I can't do this on my own, Lord. Lord, help me. I need strength. Lord, help me. Yes. I need guidance. Lord, help me. I need direction. Yes. Yes. And we all need help sometimes. Yes. All of us. Yes. You, know, you know, a lot of times we walk around acting like, you know, I got to prove to the church, or prove to my family, or prove to my spouse that I'm tough. I ain't doing that no more. You know, I get on my knees, I stand up, I drive, I'm praying. Lord, I need help. I can't do this, Lord. I don't know where to turn, but you got to do something. And he will. All right, All right let's, keep, let's get back to the scripture. Let's start at verse 38. He says, and he said to them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. Now, it's funny because I think one of the problems with the disciples was, they were so used to Jesus being in control and taking control over every situation. I think it was hard for them to see Jesus in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an environment where he's in despair. They, you know, it's almost as though I think maybe they went to sleep because they didn't really want to see Jesus struggling. You know, but Jesus struggled because he was the son of God, but he was also the son of man. Jesus is God, but he's also human. And that hum human part of Jesus is what we can identify with. That's why I always tell people, depression is not a sin. It's a human symptom. It's a condition. Now, the way out of depression is to do exactly what Jesus did. He prayed. He turned to God. He said, God, give me strength. God, help me get through this. You know, uh, he, he even asked God, take this cup from me. But God wouldn't take the cup. But what God did was give him strength. And that's what we have to understand, saints of God. All of us have to drink a cup. There's things that God asks us to do or requires of us that's hard. You know, yeah, my cup is being a pastor. You know, yeah, I'm serious. I, I, you know, a lot of people think I'm joking when I say this. I remember when I, when I, when I became a pastor, everybody was giving me congratulations. And I said, don't give me congratulations. I said, this, this, is, a, this is a call. This ain't a, you know, job, you know. Uh, and, and you know there was a time in my life when I thought I wanted to be a pastor but after seeing so much what pastors go through I'm like eh, I changed my mind on that one and then all of a sudden bang you're a pastor God will ask you to do some things that your flesh ain't comfortable with God will ask you to do some things that your emotions don't want to deal with but the thing you have to understand is when God gives you the commission he also gives you the anointing 
When God gives you commission, he also gives you the ability. When God gives you the commission, he also gives you the strength. Can't do it without. That's why if you look in the Bible, God would choose the most unlikely people to do things. He chose Moses to lead two million people out of Egypt into the promised land. He was 80 years old. When you're 80 years old, you don't feel like walking across the street. He had to walk across the desert. Okay? Then you look at some other people in the Bible. Samson. Why did God call Samson a drunk and a whoremonger? But God knew that before Samson was even born. See, what you have to understand, saints of God, is before you were even in your mother's womb, he knew you. He knew what your weaknesses were. He knew what your strengths were. He knew what your insufficiencies were. But he makes the difference. I look at my own life. Why would God call me to be a preacher? You know, I was, I was in school. I was, I was in trouble a lot. I fought a lot. You know, at one stage in my life, they were going to put me in special ed. So my mom made me go to summer school every year. I spent so much time in summer school, I forgot what summer was like. But that's what she did to keep me out of, out of, out of special ed. Some people don't know that, you know. Like a lot of you little young kids growing up with ADHD, they still, back then they called it hyperactivity. They wanted to give me drugs, my mom wouldn't make me take them. My mom, she said, no, I ain't giving them, them boy no drugs. And I thank God for my uncles and my brother because what they did was they got me involved in karate and sports and gave me discipline. You know, helped me to be focused and not be so wild. Because I used to be a wild little thing, I really was. Um, but why would God choose somebody like me? Because only God knew. God knows where we're at. You know, God called Gideon a mighty man of valor, even though Gideon was a chicken. He was hiding in a hole from the enemy, and God said, Bang, I'm calling you. You're a mighty man of valor. Because God sees what we can be, yes. not what we used to be. Yes. You know, that, that, we, we, we get hung up on where we were. God wants to take you where he wants you to be. Right. You know, and people look at me now, they can't imagine me drunk. I used to be a drunk. I almost got kicked out of the Air Force for drinking. I used to go to class with beers in my field jacket pockets. I did, in my pants pockets, my, I had beers. And I got caught and somebody turned me in and I had to go see the commander. Why would God call somebody like me? Yeah. God calls us because we're available. He provides the ability. And Peter, even though Peter, probably out of all the disciples besides John, was a disciple that stood for Jesus. He was like, you know, Peter was so down for Jesus, when they came to get him, he pulled out a sword and cut somebody's ear off. Yeah, Jesus, Peter, Peter had a little thug in him. But that's how much Peter loved Jesus. But he forgot. When Jesus said, you're going to deny me three times, he forgot. Jesus knows everything. But he said, not me, Lord. Instead of realizing, uh, Jesus predicts everything 100%. So maybe I will. But he never wanted to think the worst of himself. And we're the same way. We never want to think the worst of ourselves. But you know what? Our flesh is pretty bad. And we all have flesh. Yeah, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Didn't say some. Every one of us got something we struggle with. Now sometimes, you know, and this is the thing about those things we struggle with. It's only after we allow the Holy Spirit to control us when we get victory in that area. All right? You look at Peter. Peter was the one that denied Christ three times, but then after he got filled with the Holy Ghost, what did Peter do? Led 3,000 people to Christ. That was a different Peter. But it was a Spirit-filled Peter. It was a Spirit-led Peter. It wasn't the same Peter that was boasting about, I'll never leave you, throwing his buddies under the bus. Amen. Then he came to his disciples and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray unless you enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. This is key. He said, Watch and pray lest ye fall in temptation. If you don't watch and pray, you will fall in temptation. You know, the Bible says, Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil, he'll flee. You can't resist the devil if you don't submit to God. I know when I used to be a youth leader, I used to tell the young teenagers, if, you, if you're a young lady and you're trying to stay, you know, pure, and you're in the back seat of a car and some guy groping all over you, it's too late to call on Jesus then. You know, don't get in the car. 
But that's how we get in trouble. We end up getting in the car, you know, and it's too late. And that's what the devil, the devil wants you to get into a compromising position where your flesh, the weakness of your flesh will overtake you. But don't get into that situation. And that's what Jesus is saying to the disciples. Watch and pray. But they slept and snored. <laughs> Again, a second time, he went away and, pray, and prayed and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for the eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away again and prayed a third time, saying the same words. Let me just say this. There's going to be times when you get in trouble, and the folks that you need the most are going to be sleeping on you. He woke them up the first time, don't wake them up a second time. See what I'm saying? He didn't, he, he didn't say, oh, come on, guys. Wake up. I need your help. No. He went right back to prayer. A lot of us waste valuable time waiting on somebody to help us. We need to go to the main, main source of help. You know, I got to a place in my life where I don't, I don't, I don't have a whole lot of friends. I, sometimes I wish I did. But I've learned with many friends come many headaches and disappointments. So a lot of times when I'm in trouble, I just talk to God. You know, if you ever see me with my head down, I'm talking to God. I ain't depressed. I'm talking to God. So, you know, we all have to realize that, you know, our, our, our help comes from the Lord. Yes. You know, David said it best. He said, when no mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Yeah, your own parents can forsake you. My dad did. I, I, I was, it was a reality in my life. I, I, I heard my father tell other people that ain't my son. How do you think that made me feel? But you know what? The Lord showed me that he's my father. And to make a long story short, I led my father to Christ. So we have to understand, we can't, we're not here to, to, to put our hope and trust in things, in people, only the Lord. And we have to remember, it ain't about us. It's about him. So whenever you're doing the work for the Lord, whenever you're doing the work of God, remember, he's the focus of that, of that work. Not your ego. Not whether you get attention, not whether you get esteem. And you see, it wasn't just Peter. All the other disciples had the same problem, too, because if you remember, James and John went to Jesus and said, can we sit on the right and left hand side of you when we get to heaven? And Jesus said, y'all don't know what you're asking for. You know, and that's when he had to remind them that the least shall be the greatest. Yeah, the first, you know, shall be last. You know, the greatest of you is the servant. And we still don't get that in church. We don't. Why is it we go to church and you got a special table for special people? I'm just saying. Do you think Jesus would? He wouldn't have. And that's how Jesus was. He was just one of the guys. And that's why some people have a hard time understanding Jesus sometimes. You know, put it to you like this. Thursday is what they call Monday Thursday. That's the day of the foot washing. And when Jesus washed the disciples' feet, Peter, again, said, Lord, no. You can't wash my feet. You're the Lord. And Jesus said, if you don't let me wash your feet, you can't serve, follow me. And Peter said, okay, then wash all of me. He still didn't get it. You know, he was just thinking, you know, well, I, I want to follow you, so wash all. No. He was trying to show Peter an example of servitude. He was trying to show Peter the attitude he had to take in order to serve him. That was Jesus' attitude. Did you know washing feet was the job of a slave? When somebody came to your house and you lived in the desert, there was a slave at the door when company came to wash your feet. But that's what Jesus did. He washed people's feet. And so we had to remember, you know, I, I mean... You know, we all are guilty of it. I, it, ain't, it ain't, I'm not saying I, I, I'm not, I've never fallen into this trap. We all do. We all, we all sometimes get in the trap where we like to be served. But the greatest is the servant. That's the greatest, the servant. You know, and when you take the role of a servant, that's when you're telling Jesus, it ain't about me, it's about you. That's why one of the greatest acts that was ever performed was when that woman washed Jesus' feet. Yes. And she anointed him with that oil. Yes. And, and, and they, were, they were trying to get, get, her, get away from Jesus. You know, and the Pharisees were like, if he knew who she was, you know. 
Jesus said, what this woman has done will speak for her for generations. And to this day, we're still talking about that act. Because she realized it wasn't about her. It was about Jesus. Mary and Martha, same thing. Martha, she was fussing in the kitchen. You know, I guess Martha was the best cook in the neighborhood. And she had the pinto beans and fried chicken and cornbread back there. And I'm doing this for Jesus. I'm cooking for Jesus. Yeah, I got to, you know, get that Lowry seasoning salt. And, you know, a little bit of pepper. Yeah, I'm Jesus over my house. And Jesus is like, Martha, come hang out with me. Nah, Jesus, I got to cook this dinner for you. Because it wasn't about Jesus. Yeah. It was about her. She wanted to have the, the notoriety of cooking for Jesus. She wanted to have the notoriety of filling Jesus' stomach and making him fall asleep. Yeah, Jesus ate my fried chicken. But Jesus said, no, the, the better thing is for you to sit at my feet and listen to me talk. Yes, yes. And sometimes we get distracted saying, we ain't listening to Jesus talk. We're doing church work, but we ain't doing God work. There's a difference between church work and God work. Big difference. And we've all been guilty of that, you know, where sometimes what we got to do for the church is so important. I'm not saying doing things for the church ain't important, but if God lays on your heart to do something, you know, to do what God tells you to do. You know, I, I share this story all the time about how I was late for church one Sunday because I was helping an old lady change her tire. And when I got to church, before I could even get out of my mouth while I was late, it was fussing at me because I was late. And I'm like, time out. I had to help an old lady change a tire. And some people were still like, so you, you, you know, like, no, that could have been your grandmother. You know, so we had to remember, saints of God, it's never about us. The focus has to be on Jesus. You know, today is Palm Sunday. And we give out palms, and we, we recognize that the Palm Sunday uh, was the, the triumphal entry of Jesus. And they laid the palms down on the road, you know, and, 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 they, and they wanted Jesus to be, you know, uh, recognized. Now, Jesus, instead of riding on a horse, he rode on a donkey. Because poor people rode donkeys. And they would thought, oh, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Well, you know why most of them people were doing that? Because they thought Jesus was going to overthrow the Roman Empire. It had really nothing to do with how much they loved Jesus. So how you know that, Elder Stevens? Because when he got up on that cross, them same people that yelled Hosanna, yelled crucify him. They were disappointed because their agenda wasn't being met by Jesus. And that's why Judas betrayed Jesus. Because Judas, in his mind, Jesus wasn't supposed to go to no cross. He was supposed to lead the arms, lead, lead the arms against Rome. Yeah. See, Judas was a, was a zealot. Simon was a zealot. All right? And, and zealots were terrorists. You know, they, 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 they attacked the Roman Empire. They burned Roman buildings. They did whatever they could do. And then Jesus all of a sudden says, follow me. Well, Simon kept following Jesus. And Judas said, like, hey, we need to take over Rome. We need to overthrow the Romans. And that's why Judas betrayed Jesus. But see, Judas made it about him. And because he made it about him, the Bible says that Satan entered Judas. That's the dangerous part of being selfish. Because when you're selfish, that's an open door for the devil to jump inside of you. All right? Amen? Amen. God is good. Yeah. Brother Elijah, come here for me. I want you to give one of these to everybody. And after you get your palm, we're going to stand up and we're going to wave the palms. And we're going to say Hosanna in the highest. Not because we expect Jesus to overthrow the, the government but because he's worthy, but because he's the Lord and Savior. He's the master of the universe. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning yes. and the end, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Yes. Yes, he is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Amen. You. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hosanna. 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 Praise your name, Jesus. Praise your name, Jesus. Praise your name, Jesus. Praise your name, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus
you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.